all earlier sessions i mean lesson 1 and lesson 2 we tried to cover up the development of hydraulic circuits that too with the help of single acting cylinder and double acting cylinders along with their learning objectives in fact we also tried to correlate the way the developed circuit works with the problem statement and the simulation tool today in this session we will have learning of and of course confirming the developed circuit through a simulation tool the problem statement as sequencing of operations now when i say sequencing of operations the problem statement the focused problem statement it will be like imagine for a moment there is an operation wherein the cutting is taking place but the prerequisite for any such operation is clamping of a workpiece hence when we consider clamping of a workpiece and cutting operation the process sequence would be like initially clamping of workpiece say for an example with the help of forward movement of a cylinder once the clamping is confirmed then cutting operation would begin say it is say uh, through uh, activity number 2 forward movement of b then once the cutting operation is over i mean when the operation is completed the same sequence which we have seen like 1 and 2 it should not be repeated initially cutting tool must be retracted and then declamping should happen therefore the operation sequence for this particular problem statement or a industrial case study would be one forward of a two forward of b three reverse of b and then reverse of a in this particular problem statement when we look at all four stages all four uh, activities we observe that they are not in sequence like forward of a forward of b then reverse of uh, a and then reverse of b it is not like that and also we have to note that when there are two cylinders both are double acting we should also take care of how these two cylinders are included in a particular hydraulic circuit so as to provide the sequence of operation which has been mentioned hence let us see initially how the problem statement has to be worked out and then we will check the simulation of the same as the problem statement goes two double acting cylinders which are required cylinder number 1 of course a double acting and a cylinder number 2 the same double acting cylinder with their inputs and outputs in place let us assume that this is cylinder number 1 this is cylinder number 2 so what should happen a forward then b forward then b reverse finally a reverse this is have a 
problem statement should work out a forward b forward b reverse and then a reverse in order to check this let us try to develop a circuit initially we have a reservoir then a filter pump then an electric motor a safeguarding device of a variable nature we have double acting cylinder number one double acting cylinder number two i mean a and b both are with their input and output and now a direction control valve which has a reservoir point here and specifically using four ports two position direction control valve with this as a very important feature the feature locks a direction control valve at its position what do you mean by that it means once the force is exerted over a lever i'm talking about a direction control valve actuating mechanism once the force is ex exerted then this two forward lines would be superimposed over this and because of this particular mechanism even if operator releases a force over a lever the position will be maintained this is what the importance of locking which is available over a direction control valve and this is the answer for the question which i left out which is unanswered in our lesson number 2 with this direction control valve in place let us check how the activities will be worked out we have a direction control valve two straight lines which are connected this is p t a and b this has a this has a detention and a lever what do we need we need a b initially forward movement of a so what i'll be doing i'll be connecting a with a point of a direction control valve with one of a input of a cylinder then what should happen once the full forward movement of a cylinder is observed then a flow of a fluid should go towards piston side of b cylinder carefully observe and note that if we connect them like a straight line it would probably happen like oil will also move towards this and even it will pass across this this is not the condition the condition is initially oil should flow towards this once the forward movement is established then only oil should pass through this line hence the important part here to note is we have to restrict the movement of oil which is passing through this hence what i am doing i'll be placing one normally closed state valve in this line like this so what will happen 
oil will flow through us through this line a will be observed with forward movement then oil will pass across this initially it will observe that the point is closed hence oil will not pass across this it will keep on flowing towards a only once the forward movement is established then only through this dotted line which has been referred as pilot signal the force will be exerted on to bottom side of the spool the spool will slowly rise up and then oil will pass from this line to this line so as to pass into piston side of b actuator i hope you all are getting me here with this we have established and we have completed our two initial activities forward of a then forward of b now to observe reverse of a and reverse of b not in the sequence like i spelt out but in the sequence which i have mentioned reverse of b and reverse of a what should happen and what all changes that we are required to be incorporated because here listen to me carefully and after this we will be switching on to a simulation wherein i'll be directly telling you what all changes we have incorporated note that use of only one normally closed state valve is not enough along with this normally closed state valve we need a check valve and and one more normally closed state valve along with another check valve so what we what we need what we need we need an assembly of this i am sketching that assembly for you all what we need is we need this the assembly which had shown in the bottom right most corner we need this assembly how this assembly is placed and look and where it is located and how it serves the purpose that i'll show you now i'm trying to share with you all the simulation just give me a moment so that we can switch over to our simulation phase till that moment you can work on your own the placement of an assembly which had shown in this slide look at the screen now i have directly placed all those elements which are required to complete our operation to complete our problem statement
what we have what we have is we have two double acting cylinders direction control valve then we have two normally closed state valves and two check valves look at it how it works initially the oil will pass through the cross connections i mean p to b is connected oil has reached towards the rod end side of one of a direction one of a double acting cylinder through a direction control valve in its forward movement when i'll be switching a direction control valve to connect the two straight lines i mean from to uh, i mean from p to a and b to t look at it what is happening initially left hand side double acting cylinder will have a forward movement and then the other double acting cylinder will show a forward movement look at it forward of 1 forward of 2 now what should happen when direction control wall is placed in its initial phase i mean two cross connections p to b and a to t the second double acting cylinder should initially retract and then the first double acting cylinder should observe its reverse movement look at it let me show you again the two forward movements movements one by one forward of left side double acting cylinder then forward of right side double acting cylinder and now reverse of right side and then reverse of left side so what is the take away from this session is we learnt about sequencing operation and the valve that we all have used the combination of valve which has a combination of one normally closed state valve and one way valve the assembly is called as a sequence valve so the lesson was related to use of a sequence valve in the industrial case wherein a clamping cylinder and the operational cylinder should behave like the sequence which has been listed down in our problem statement i hope it is clear thank you